Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Lillian Rippa grew up in a creative family where the arts were encouraged. Her first career impulse was to become a fashion illustrator. Family came first, and then while living in Japan, she studied traditional doll making for two years. Back in the States, she eventually studied to become a Montessori elementary school teacher, which became her primary work for many years. That's where my philosophy is, that there is no freedom without discipline. And to see that gradually work is so beautiful to watch. And I did all of the art for the children also at the, those years. There was a, a woman who was giving classes at the college in Chinese freestyle painting. And her name was Ming Friedman, and she was such a, a, a wonderful artist. I, my husband pushed me and pushed me, he said, come on, you, you'll love it, you'll love it, because I wasn't satisfied with what just Western watercolor and pen and ink, even though that's what I was doing. I got so hooked. I, it was so wonderful, because you, I was so free. I was willing to work harder than I ever worked in my life to do that. Then I was put in touch with um, Professor Chu, and um, he he was such a wonderful teacher, and uh, he was he was like my Montessori person who uh, there's no freedom without discipline. Lillian says her first year studying with Professor Ishuang Zhu was one of the best in her life. At the end of it, she was given a solo show. She and her husband became close friends with her teacher and his wife over the years. Since then, she has focused exclusively on Chinese freestyle brushwork. This is closely related to Chinese calligraphy, which is only taught to be done with the right hand. Lillian, being left-handed, faced this obstacle with dedication. When you're studying the art and Chinese art, regardless of if it's freestyle or, or the elaborate style, whatever style you use, you, you need to study the four gentlemen and that is the, the chrysanthemum, and the orchid, and the bamboo, and the plum. And uh, they incorporate all of the basic strokes that you will need. I, I had to work really over a year on the bamboo because that's the bone stroke, and that would be closely resembling the calligraphy. And um, my teacher felt that that was the best way for me to go. There's no pencil on the paper and you have to know your subject, you have to know your strokes that you want to use before you start your painting. Then you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but you have to master that. So if I put a stroke down on the paper and I'm not strong or I'm weak or I'm not interested, it shows and it looks shaky. In traditional art forms like this, there is a reverence for everything from the process to the materials themselves. The ink, the grinding stone, the brush, and the paper are called the four treasures. In some ways, Lillian's painting is a collaboration with other artisans. None of her tools or materials are machine manufactured. The brushes, pigments, inks, grinding stones, even the containers have been beautifully designed and carefully produced by human beings using ancient practices. They are gorgeous in and of themselves. Lillian has invested in a supply of handmade papers which are becoming harder and harder to find. And the handmade paper, I always when I throw it away, I say I'm sorry because some somebody during the cold time of the year with the water and would pound all those reeds, pound them and mulch them. It's quite a process. So when you throw a piece of paper away, somebody, you don't know how long it took for them to pound that to a pulp so that they could use it to make the paper. I have enough paper to last me the rest of my life. I have a, a paper, all my paper is from, from China. I have some from Korea. I'm always very careful with my brushes. I always rinse them well and I always make sure that I go against the, the, the bowl and get a nice little point on them before I let them dry. Uh, they, you know, in older times the Japanese would have a special ceremony when they threw their brushes away. 
Despite her modesty, Lillian has amassed an impressive body of work, and at the age of 84, she has amazing energy. Lillian practices her brushstrokes just about every day. She says that this discipline makes her more confident and actually gives her a sense of freedom in her work. I can't explain that feeling I have when I paint, when I, I can just put that stroke down and it's just so exhilarating. Well, uh, when I decide on a painting, it has to be something I really want to do. So I may not be as prolific maybe as others, but I feel what I'm going to paint. I'm doing it now that I'm older. <laughs> I, I'm doing some smaller paintings and I'm doing Lillian's garden and I have a beautiful garden outside with all kinds of little things. So I will go out there and look and see what do I want. Do I want that big toad in my pond? Do I, you know, I have iris. I have all beautiful things, but I, I don't paint with anything in front of me. I have to see that even if I go out into the woods or to a place where there's a stream, I can see that. I can take a picture, but you have to get the essence from that. Otherwise, you'll have a photograph. I have to carry that in my memory. And then I analyze it. Do I need certain strokes? What do I want to show on this? And uh, so I give it a lot of thought first. All my ink is ground. All my colors are ready. Everything has to be ready. You have maybe, maybe worked on some strokes for quite a while, uh, separate from this painting. But when I go to do the painting itself, that has to be all behind me, and I have to be able to do that with my soul. Lillian has also been an active volunteer at the Smyrna Opera House, which now boasts both a performance space and a gallery. Her work will be in the Delaware Foundation for the Arts Spring Show at the Hagley Museum in Wilmington, April 8th through the 10th. And you can see her paintings anytime at the Hardcastle Gallery in Newark, Delaware. You can visit our website to see her work and get links to more information about Lillian. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com support. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore, and underwriters eatdrinkbyart.com for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>